Egypt consumer prices rise 14.6 percent in August year-on-year, year, and Prime Minister Truss unveils plans to freeze energy bills for two years. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Ramia Farai. Consumer prices in Egypt climbed 14.6 percent in August this year compared to 2021. They're also up from 13.6 percent in July. Food and beverage costs comprise the biggest component of the inflation basket, up 23.1 percent. Analysts say Egypt's inflation is probably close to its peak. They say increases in input prices for non-oil companies have already slowed sharply, but businesses remain under pressure from higher fuel and raw material costs. Logistics company Maersk Kanu has signed an agreement with Dubai South for a new warehousing and distribution facility. The 162,000 square foot facility in the Dubai South Logistics District will also serve as an e-fulfillment center. It follows the inauguration of the first warehousing and distribution facility in Dubai at Jafsa earlier this year in March. Maersk will more than double its total footprint in the UAE with the new fulfillment center. Qatar Telecom's giant Uridu has inked a deal to sell two Myanmar units to Singapore's nine communications for an enterprise value of $576 million. The total equity consideration is $162 million. Uridu says the difficult decision to divest from its Myanmar business is a direct result of a review to reshape its portfolio. It says it was important to make this call when Uridu Myanmar is performing at its strongest to ensure the business continues from strength to strength. Saudi's Ministry of Commerce is launching 10 initiatives to develop the kingdom's e-commerce sector. Stores will be obliged to include all warranty information on their websites and expand their geographical coverage to all of the regions of the kingdom. Online stores must also provide different payment solutions. The ministry is requiring they offer technical systems to manage and follow up on refunds, among other initiatives. To Britain, where Prime Minister Truss has unveiled plans to freeze sky-high domestic energy bills for two years to ease a cost-of-living crisis. Truss also lifted a UK ban on energy fracking, which is opposed by environmentalists. Truss says the government will review progress over Britain's 2050 net zero emissions target. The government expects the state-backed scheme to cost tens of billions of dollars, but Truss and new finance minister Kwasi Kwarteng insist it will have substantial benefits for the economy. The British government is reportedly also expected to announce dozens of new North Sea oil and gas exploration licenses in an effort to boost domestic production. During the leadership campaign, Prime Minister Truss repeatedly said boosting domestic energy supply would be part of her focus in seeking to bring down prices. The licensing round won't offer any short-term relief to energy bills, though, as it typically takes between five to ten years from initial exploration until oil and gas is produced from a field. To China, where Evergrande Group's Hong Kong headquarters has reportedly been seized by a lender. It comes after the struggling Chinese property developer defaulted on a loan and twice failed to sell the building. Evergrande is the world's most indebted developer. Saddled with more than $300 billion in liabilities, Evergrande is struggling to repay its many creditors through asset sales and debt restructuring. Honda will reduce production by up to 40% at two Japanese plants for the rest of the month due to ongoing supply chain and logistical problems. Its assembly plant in Saitama Prefecture, north of Tokyo, will slash output by about 40% this month. Two lines at its Suzuka plant in western Japan will cut back production plans by about 20% in September. Taiwanese semiconductor giant TSMC saw its August revenue rise nearly 60 percent to a record high of $7.06 billion on soaring global demand. TSMC operates the world's largest silicon wafer factories and produces some of the most advanced microchips used in everything from smartphones and cars to missiles. The vast majority of the world's top-notch microchips are made by just two companies, TSMC and Samsung, both of which are running at full capacity to alleviate the global shortage. I'm Ramya Faraj. This is The Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.